Greetings, I am the snarky apologist, and you are hardwired into the Interocitor Report. The views expressed in the Interocitor Report are solely those of the creator, the aforementioned creator specifically being the snarky apologist and not God. The host of the Interocitor Report reserves for himself the right of free speech and expression of such is deemed in an alienable right from God under the First Amendment, but at no time will employ it by wildly running and shouting fire in a crowded theater, unless of course it's an incredibly stupid movie. Any characters or persons portrayed in these videos without knowledge are highly encouraged to get an education. Any reproductions or reduplications of this material without the express written consent of the originators is forcefully encouraged. So, help me God. Greetings, my name is Bill and I am the snarky apologist. On this video, I'm going to play a request. Uh, several people, myself mainly one of them, <laughs> requested that uh, I take a look at John chapter 10. Uh, I've done a video on John chapter 10 talking about I and the Father are one. Uh, Jesus says no one can snatch them out of my hands and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hands because I and the Father are one. Um, the Watchtower Society will use John 1034 is justification for why Jesus can be a God. We're going to take a look at John chapter 10 uh, in light of John 1034 where Jesus answers them, Is it not written in your law, I have said, ye are gods? So therefore, the watchtower says, well, since Jesus can say they are gods, as the Old Testament says, well then he could be a God. When we're done, mining and harvesting this gold and bringing it into the treasure house of our heart will all be blessed by this. We'll have a greater understanding of God's Word. It'll enable you to defend your faith more and grow in your faith. The best way to learn about your faith is to learn how to defend it. So let's dig in and find out what God's Word has got to say about this passage. To begin with, let me explain that there's a couple schools of interpretive thought on this. The first being that the judges represented God in as much that they had the power of life and death over people. And as such, they were referred to as gods. But that's in the sense of their representation of Yahweh not in their being. And I think you can understand the difference there. The other school of thought in this regards is that God could be somewhat sarcastic, dare I say snarky, in reference to the judges. Let's take a look at the verse, and I think you'll see this play out in a rather fascinating manner. So let's begin. Verse 1 tells us that God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. So you have Yahweh, Jehovah. You have God sitting in judgment of the other gods, of the judges. So he sits in judgment of the judges is what's going on here. Well, let's proceed. Now in verses 2 through 5, you have Yahweh condemning the judges. He's bringing condemnation on them, and he's telling them, look, how long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Come on, guys, defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Ugh! You know, the gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. You hear Yahweh's condemnation of these these judges who are not ruling fairly, who are not, they're showing partiality to the wicked. They're not defending the weak and the fatherless. This is what Yahweh is all upset about. These judges, these gods, are not doing their job. Now verse 6 states, I said you are, ju you are gods. This goes back, this is a reference to verse 1. It says, and God will, will judge in the midst of the gods. This is referring back to that. Now, even though the psalmist is referring to these judges as, quote, gods, he's not meaning literal gods, mighty ones, and, you know, that kind of thing. They're not gods. They're ordinary men 
but they think of themselves as gods and powerful, and they're actually abusing the power, much like the bureaucrats in government <laughs> that we have today. Um, not too far off from that, so I, I think you get the idea. And I guess you can carry it a little bit further by asking the question, if they are gods, are they true gods, or are they false gods? And the statement, you are all sons of the Most High, what's going on there? Well, let's take a look at the options that we have available to us. The term sons of God, or sons of the Most High, is used in several places in Scripture. But it leaves us with two options, that either it's speaking of these judges as being an angel or a godly line of men and as it plays out they're neither angels nor godly men well, what option does that leave us with then well keeping in mind that the judges attitude towards themselves is that they were gods they are they were high on their power you know they had all the wealth and the power prestige and everything all the trimmings and trappings that went with it so they really had big heads and thought they were gods but the very next verse verse 7 tells us clearly but you will die like mere mortals you will fall like every other ruler see they're really nothing special at least they're not as good as they think they are and then we close up with verse 8 that states, Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. The, the psalmist is calling for God to do his job. God, you are the judge. Get rid of these false gods down here, these judges that are messing everything up. Now, what does that mean, and how does that speak to Jesus' statements in John? Now, here's what helped me. Let me read for you an expanded paraphrase of John 10 34 through 36 and and hopefully this will help make this make sense this is what really helped me so here we go is it not written in the law which you call your own I said you are gods the psalmist whom you regard as one of your own and yourselves as worthy successors to him called those wicked judges against whom the word of God came in judgment gods and yet the scripture cannot be broken it must have some fulfillment therefore these worthless judges must have been called gods for a reason to point to some worthy human judge who is rightly called God now the father has witnessed to my holy calling and sent me into the world to fulfill everything he has purposed that being so, how can you, who claim to follow in the tradition of the psalmist, possibly be justified in rejecting the fulfillment of his words by accusing me of blasphemy for calling myself the Son of God? How can you escape being associated with those wicked judges who judged unjustly by your unjust judgment of me? Now, I hope, I hope that helped and didn't hinder. Um, but that is, that's my take on this. And I think it makes sense. It harmonizes with Scripture. It, it, it appeals to logic. It makes historical sense. So, hope this has been a blessing to you folks. I love you all. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. Bye-bye.